morning, Alice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm very excited and really honored to be in conversation with you on this beautiful spring morning. Uh, this is your first solo exhibition here at the gallery. And uh, by way of introducing this, I was wondering if maybe you could tell us more about how the exhibition came about and the various bodies of work which you're exhibiting here. In this exhibition, uh, all the artworks are result of performances. In these performances, uh, the body interacts with technological objects. So the paintings derive from fast movements, while the sculptures are coming from very slow meditative gestures. And both groups of performances uh, lead to a sort of, uh, would say, poetic memorization. So Alice, you've just brought up the idea of memorization and memorizing, um, which is one of the many um, threads, actually, that uh, bring the various bodies in the exhibition together. So can you tell me more about what memorizing is um, and, and how it, the various methodologies for memorizing which are presented in the exhibition? The concept of memorization is uh, encircling an object with a copper thread. This ritual can be done individually or collectively. I really believe in the power of the collective. Uh, the metallic thread establishes a contact with the object and the movements are activating it. Uh, it is a dialogue with the object, a way of knowing it, of memorizing it. I'm using a copper color thread to symbolize neuronal connections as well as technological connections from the early age of the internet. So Alice, to continue to expand on this idea of memorizing, I was curious to ask you, what is the relationship between memorizing and archiving on one side? And then on the other side, I was interested in hearing your thoughts on what you feel the role of human memory is becoming in, in the digital age. Today, fiber is replacing copper and our uh, tech devices are an extension of our memory. In my paintings, the performances with paint allow a physical memorization of the object itself as a possible exosomatic memory printed on the canvas, referring to the painting that we see in the Shove cave, for instance. I found similar geological rhythm of the cave in the Sierra Nevada in Colombia. Young Kogi do their initiation in caves uh, for years before becoming Mama's shaman. For this community, the cave represents the beginning of the world. So Alice, you've just mentioned a really interesting and important idea which I'd like to ask you more about, um, which is this idea that our devices are extensions of ourselves. Um, this brings me to the subject of transhumanism, which I feel is also reflected in the exhibition title, Human, Non-Human Interactions. So could you maybe tell me more about you know, your thoughts on transhumanism and, and, and what, what you think it means to be human in, in 2022? The title of the exhibition uh, describes my uh, animist approach to uh, technological objects. It refers to a term using a computer program, human-machine interface. It is a task generating a human-computer interaction that triggers empathy for machines and robots. Well, being human in 2022 means to integrate to our lives the awareness of our evolution, which is changing the prospects of our body, but also of our consciousness. And the questions related to the body are still essential today. In some parts of the world, the body is going to be put on mute uh, through the striking advances of AI or machine learning, as well as the metaverse. So, um, Alice, I wanted to um, ask you about a, another idea which I think is interesting to discuss. is this idea of interconnectedness, which is also part of the exhibition title. Right? We're speaking of interactions. Um, we're speaking about the connection between human and machine, but also perhaps the connections between various beings, entities, their environment. Um, so I wanted to ask you about this idea of interconnectedness, which is 
you know, an idea that you can really find across cultures, across times, across geographies. Um, it's an idea that you can find in ancient Buddhist philosophy, in, in um, indigenous cosmovisions, all the way to quantum physics. And I was wondering if you could tell us more about your interest in bringing together various forms of knowledge from across times and geographies, which feels to me something that's quite potent in, in, your, in your practice. Um, finding other dimensions or uh, relationship to nature uh, through science or ancestral cultures, um, as the Dogon of Mali, uh, Aborigine of Australia, Atwar of Amazon, Kogi community in Colombia, are crucial to me. Um, in order to understand the living force that expresses itself in human and non-human beings. The art critic Annabel Guignon, with whom I often collaborate, uh, explained that if reality is augmented through the power of technology, um, then human should not be diminished as a consequence. Um, she confirms that First people hold the key to the survival of humanity because they are not disconnected from the real world. They have not exiled themselves from reality. They are remaining close to their land. He talks about the anthropologist André Leroy Gouran, who uh, in a nutshell explained in 65 that what is to be feared is that after many, many self-externalizations, uh, Homo sapiens with, will become encumbered by a body uh, inherited from the Paleolithic. So Alice, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about um, performances process in, in the various bodies of work which you're presenting in the exhibition. They're all rooted in um, a performative process which engages your body in uh, various rituals. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us more about those rituals and the role of, of performance as process for making those works. Painting and sculptures are totally connected. Uh, one cannot exist without the other. So in the beginning of everything is the dance with the object. I'm ritualizing the object through paint to open a first dialogue uh, that will maybe create a painting. And I can also establish another connection with the same object, but this time uh, with metallic thread, which will potentially create a sculpture. Then the spirit of the object uh, embedded either in the sculpture or in the painting can be reactivated through dance uh, when I need to continue the dialogue. In 2019, at the Atelier Calder, I started the series of the geometric dances. During these dances, I paint directly with a tech object that I ritualize through paint onto the canvas. As you can see, the central area remains empty, uh, showing the space that the body has occupied during the dance. The canvas is placed on the ground and becomes a dance floor, uh, on which I repeat and uh, repeat uh, circular movements. On the canvas, each object must find uh, its own movement. As long as there is no proper dancing with the object, there's no possible painting. So in, in considering the, the sort of various methodologies that you're using to memorize objects and thinking about you know, the importance of dance, and the importance of weaving in this process, which are both, again, universal and ancestral forms of art making that you reinvent in the context of a conceptually led contemporary artistic practice. So I was interested to ask you about, you know, to tell us more about how you're, you know, you're, you're bringing those ancient forms of art making into your, your work today. All these hybridations lead to poetry in the same way that the Bauhaus movement made experimentations. I would say that my practice is a way of living. Uh, for me, there is no difference between arts and life. So, Alice, I wanted to ask you also about um, this idea of a spiritual machine, um, which um, is, is also an idea which comes about in your practice. And 
thinking about this in, you know, in relation to the way in which um, machines can transcend um, our, our biological limits, thinking about ideas around um, artificial intelligence. So um, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about this and then also uh, maybe speak to um, a spiritual dimension in your practice. My work mixes the world of technology and ancestral culture as a way of finding spirituality in the development of technology. In 2011, uh, my research on memory led me to transhumanism and the potential humanity shift uh, led me to memorize the objects as if they had a link um, with our physical existence. Then I started to create The Spiritual Machines, a title after Ray Kurzweil book in 1999. The Spiritual Machines are made of recycled tech objects. You see, each object has a certain power uh, that goes well beyond its simple primary function. As far as I'm concerned, I always bound to non-human entities because objects have the power uh, to interact among themselves as well as with us. They are using a universal language that I find in dance. Well, dancing is, is a deep reconnection to the nature that we have in us. And the spiritual machines are reminding us of humanoid spirits and adopting the point of view of non-humans. Objects embody a presence in the sculptures exactly as they embody a presence in the paintings. So, Alice, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the digital goddesses and um, starting with the title, which is a reference to a text by Donna Haraway called um, A Cyborg Manifesto. Um, it's a text which was published in the mid 80s and is often regarded as a, a, a founding text in um, ideas around cyber feminism. Um, and so in that text, the author really explores um, alliances between women, um, machinery, and new technologies. Um, and so I wanted to ask you a little bit more about you know, ideas around cyber feminism, maybe post cyber feminism today, and also how you think digital culture is affecting gender politics. I've always looked for what has been raised from her story. And studying on the fluidity of identity, including the one of the object, have been crucial to demonstrate the need for consideration and respect. Araway talks about responsibility. My understanding is the need to establish a dialogue that will not exclude any beings. Um, so Alice, this is um, my last question and, and perhaps a way to wrap up this conversation by opening it up to um, wider, maybe political um, considerations, even though we've spoken quite a bit about politics already in a way, thinking about uh, gender politics. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, I know that you're really interested in ideas around ecofeminism, and I wanted to ask you to tell us more about, about that. Well, I found answers in uh, anthropology and in ecofeminism thinking of where other relationships to nature are possible, where new societies can be created between humans and non-humans. I think about Starhope, who in the 70s proposed to celebrate the living without hierarchy. It is an inspiration for a world without domination systems. Her celebration of the Earth was also a celebration of the feminine with this pirate dance.